Putin's propaganda machinery was not turned on only on February 24. It has been working in Europe for decades already, attempting to poison and divide our societies. While the war is ongoing in Europe, online platforms and tech companies need to take a stand by, proactively suspending accounts engaged in denying, glorifying and justifying aggression, war crimes and crimes against humanity. They have to reinforce content in Russian and Ukrainian languages to resist the pressure from Russian government's disinformation. In short, any tech platform complying with Putin's censorship request is an accomplice of Putin's aggression. We have imposed costs on the perpetrators, including through banning Russia Today and Sputnik from broadcasting in the European Union. Because they are not independent media, they are assets, they are weapons in the Kremlin's manipulation ecosystem. And I want to stop here, because it has been criticism, saying that we are attempting against the freedom of information. Let's consider what is information. Let's consider what is information and what these outlets are. Let me take a moment to underline the essence of this issue. We are not trying to decide what is true and what is false. I am not the minister of the truth. We don't have ministers of the truth. But we have to focus on foreign actors who intentionally, in a coordinated manner, try to manipulate our information environment to advance their own purposes and to harm us. Sputnik was created by a Russian presidential decree with the aim to report on the state policy of Russia abroad. And according with the Russia editor-in-chief, Russia today is capable, according with the editor-in-chief, Russia today is capable of conducting information war, war against the whole Western world. And both channels facilitate and engage in cyber-facilitated influence operations, including those that have been attributed to the Russian military intelligence, the famous GRU. We know that this disinformation and foreign interference has been a part of Russia's military doctrine for decades. In fact, Russia systematically was preparing all of us that this will happen. Also, all the attacks through disinformation against Ukraine, which Joseph described here, they were preparing the public opinion on, on this aggression. And so we also see that the playbook, the playbook is not all new. And those of you who remember the times of the Soviet Union, like I do, know that the truth was the greatest enemy of this oppressive regime. And now we see the law from the 4th of March, 15 years of prison for telling the people the truth or for de de delivering objective facts. President Putin wants his nation to be blind and deaf. More than that, President Putin, I think, would like the Russian people to be apathetic. That's why I am so glad that yesterday Netflix decided to withdraw from the country because President Putin wants the people to be entertained, not to pay attention to what's happening. And my response is I welcome this decision of Netflix because it would not be right to see Russians being entertained and next door Ukrainians being killed.